Hello and welcome to another video on cardiovascular physiology where we will discuss some equations, very high yield equations, which often show up on exams. So be sure to subscribe, like my video and spread the word. Uh, let's start off with stroke volume. So what's a stroke volume? Well, let's go back to our single chamber heart. Veins bring back the blood and the heart pumps it out. The amount of this pumped out blood in a single beat is called the stroke volume. Let's look at the equation now. Stroke volume equals end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume. Back to our heart. Blood comes back in veins, fills up the heart and gives us the end diastolic volume. Then the heart pumps it out, giving us a stroke volume and some of the blood is left behind in the heart, which makes up the end systolic volume. Let's say we had 100 ml of blood coming in, so our end diastolic volume is 100. Uh, let's assume at the end of contraction, 40 ml of blood is still left behind in the heart, so that gives us the end systolic volume of 40 ml. Let's put these values into the equation and see what's the answer. The answer is 60, so the stroke volume is 60. Oftentimes, we take stroke volume as ejection fraction, which means how much of the original amount of blood is pumped out of the heart. We multiply it by 100 to get the answer in percentage. This discussion makes the rest of the equations easier to understand. For example, when we look at all the stroke volumes in a minute, we get cardiac output. The equation for cardiac output is stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. Let's put in some numbers. For example, we have a stroke volume of 60 ml and a heart rate of 70 beats per minute. If we solve this, we get 4200 ml, which is the amount of blood that is pumped out in a minute. Cardiac output is very important to understand because it tells us about the condition of the heart and how well the cardiovascular system is performing. Uh, we can see from the equation that cardiac output depends on two variables, that is the stroke volume and the heart rate. If we increase the stroke volume, cardiac output increases. If we increase the heart rate, cardiac output increases. If we decrease the stroke volume or the heart rate or both of them, cardiac output goes down. So to understand it better, uh, let's see what happens during exercise. Exercise does two things. One of these is activation of sympathetic autonomic nervous system, which brings about three changes of its own. Number one, it increases the heart rate by increasing the pacemaker activity. And we just saw that increasing the heart rate increases cardiac output. But remember this increase in heart rate is within physiologic limits. Number two, sympathetic system activates beta-1 receptors on the heart, which results in increased force of contraction. Because of that, we get increased stroke volume and increased cardiac output. Third thing the sympathetic system does is to activate venous alpha-1 receptors. We get increased venous return because the blood is squeezed out of the veins. This causes increased end diastolic volume which results in increased stroke volume and again increased cardiac output. The second thing that happens during exercise is activation of the muscle pump. It's just a fancy way of saying veins squeezed by contracting muscles. This gives us increased venous return, which gives us increased end diastolic volume, increased stroke volume, and increased cardiac output. That's how exercise increases cardiac output, by increasing the heart rate and the stroke volume. Let's talk about the arteries. How do they respond to exercise? They respond a little different. Sure, sympathetic system acts on 
alpha-1 receptors of the arteries and try to constrict them, but the arteries are also responding to local vasodilators produced during exercise, for example, linosine and lactic acid. So the arteries are relatively relaxed to allow for increased blood flow to the muscles during exercise. Remember, increasing the heart rate does not always result in increased cardiac output. The best example is a tachyarrhythmia where we have an increased heart rate beyond physiologic limit. This results in minimal time for relaxation of the heart between beats and so the heart is not filled properly. Less filling means less outward stretch which results in weaker force of contraction as per Starling law. So the stroke volume goes down, cardiac output goes down despite a very fast heart rate. And we get signs and symptoms of syncope, shortness of breath, confusion, etc. because we are not perfusing our tissues properly, especially the brain. So that's it for now. We will meet in the next video where we will discuss some more equations.